every disease has many signs and symptoms. But the question is, how are diseases caused? You might say that it is because of the pathogens, the microbes. But you should remember that every disease has several levels of causes. To understand these level of causes, let us take a look at an example. So for example, if this boy is suffering from food poisoning, then he would have symptoms like loose motions, stomach ache, etc. If I ask you what causes this food poisoning, you might say that it is due to an infection of bacteria. So the bacteria becomes the immediate cause of this disease. But now I have a question that where did this bacteria come from? We can say that this bacteria is found in dirty food. So this dirty food was consumed by this boy. Now a lot of boys they have eaten this food. But how come only this boy got the disease of food poisoning? We may say that it is so because he is unhealthy. Which means that he might have a weak immune system. Now because he is unhealthy, he might have got that disease easily, whereas the other boys could not. Getting more into it, I want to ask another question that why is this boy unhealthy? What actually made him unhealthy? It can be so because he is undernourished, which means he doesn't get enough food to keep himself healthy. Another question comes, why is he is not getting proper food? Why is he undernourished? We can say so because he might belong to a poor household. So did you just notice that there are so many causes in this disease? So beside the immediate cause which was bacteria, there are so many levels of causes such as poor nourishment or maybe poor household. Although poor nourishment or poor household will not themselves cause this disease, but they become a major contributory cause to this disease. So in simple word, we can say that every disease has more than one cause. So beside the major cause, which is the immediate cause, every disease will have a few contributory causes as well. Okay, so now there can be two immediate causes of a disease. The first are those which we know as pathogens or microbes. So these are those organisms which spread in the community and they spread the disease along with them. And hence these diseases can also be called as infectious diseases. So the first cause that we just see that occurs with the help of microbes, these diseases, as I said, they are called as infectious diseases. For example, like common cold, etc. But the question is, do all the diseases they spread from a sick person to the persons coming in contact with him or her? Not certainly. The second type of diseases are those which do not occur with the help of any microbes. So the causes of this, this, these kind of diseases, they vary, but they are not caused by any external factors such as microbes. They are usually caused by internal factors such as maybe due to the deficiency of nutrients or hormones or they can occur due to the malfunctioning of any body part. For example, if you see diabetes. So the disease of diabetes, it is usually caused due to the deficiency of a hormone. Similarly, various diseases such as heart diseases, cancer, thyroid, etc. They all are caused due to intrinsic factors. There are no microbes involved in the cause of these diseases. So till now you have understood very well that there can be two categories of diseases. First, the infectious diseases which are caused 
due to the microbes or due to the external factors. The second, the non-infectious diseases which usually occur due to the intrinsic factors. So student in this lesson, you have very well understood the various levels of causes of disease and also the two most important immediate cause of a disease.